Joe Biden may be the oldest president in history, but he'll need to rely on young voters if he wants to keep power in the House and Senate this November. The under-30 crowd have historically been written off as non-voters, but their record turnout in 2018 and again in 2020 was vital to blue victories nationwide. And their frustration with President Biden also helped crater his approval ratings this summer, when less than 20 percent of voters under 30 approved of the president's performance. In fact, only 1 percent, 1 percent of those young voters said they strongly approved of Joe Biden's performance. It appears that, belatedly, the Biden administration is now aware of the importance of the youth vote and trying to get Gen Z folks energized, with a recent burst of decisions on student loan forgiveness and federal marijuana offense pardons, among others, that will certainly resonate with the under-30 demographic. But with the midterms only weeks away, will it be enough? Joining me now, Christina Zinzun Ramirez, president of the Next Gen PAC, a group focused on building the youth vote, and Victor Shi, co host of the Intergenerational Politics podcast and strategy director for Voters of Tomorrow. Thank you both for joining me, Victor. Let me start with you. According to the Washington Post, Joe Biden hasn't yet seen a huge approval boost in the wake of his student debt forgiveness announcement. Is this a polling lag, or are young people just unimpressed with what he announced? So, my, my guess is it's a polling lag because tomorrow, the organization I just joined a couple of weeks ago, we actually conducted a poll right after the student loan forgiveness program and uh, before the marijuana decision uh, last week. And we found that President Biden is seeing a much higher approval rating. And it makes sense because for young people, these are the issues that really matter to us. Among them are abortion, the right to access an abortion, climate change, and student loan forgiveness. And then now uh, marijuana uh, being decriminalized, or I guess, uh, hardening those with simple marijuana possession. And so I think you're starting to see a lot of young people respond to what President Biden and his administration are doing for our lives. And I think you're going to really see that sustained as we go into November, because you have Democrats actually delivering for the issues that we care about. And you see Republicans, on the other hand, really attacking our lives. They're coming after what we can do in school. They're coming after LGBTQ expression. They are attacking yeah. the very lives of young people. And I think that's going to make the key difference for a lot of young people. And I think what's going to drive them to the ballot box come November. Christina, let's take a look at a new ad from your group, Next Gen Pack. Have a listen. Two years ago, you delivered. You turned out, spoke up, elected Democrats nationwide. And now, our largest investment ever to fight climate change. Lower health care costs. 10,000 in student loans forgiven per person. Big polluters and other corporations forced to pay their fair share. And Democrats defending our right to choose. Thanks to you. So on November 8th, Election Day, show up and let's win again. Christina, has the Biden administration effectively conveyed to young voters everything they've done so far in the way that that ad from you guys does? I mean, I think there's been a surge in young voter excitement about the upcoming midterms. I mean, generally, there's low voter turnout in a midterm, but we've seen a surge in voter registration post the Dobbs decision um, of young people, especially young women, registering. So on one side, as stated before, a real attack and assault on the lives and rights of young people from the extremist right wing. And at the same time, Biden has delivered. Young people voted in record numbers for Biden, but they voted to defeat fascism. He was never the popular youth voter candidate, but now he's done some very popular things canceling student debt, looking at how to decriminalize marijuana, historic investment in, uh, in climate change and gun safety legislation. Young people have come out and voted in record numbers for progressive policy, and they are already starting to remake and reshape the Democratic Party. And Christina, what's the most important thing that the Biden administration could do between now and November to engage even more young voters? I mean, I think that in addition to what they've already done on delivering on policy, which is the most important thing to do, because that is ultimately what people want, they need to go out into the field and connect and speak to young voters and talk about the changes that they've delivered. I think a lot of young people have heard about the student debt um, uh, effort, but may not know whether it impacts their lives or not. I can tell you I was on a campus just a few weeks ago, and I would say that a good chunk were very, very excited of the young people we spoke to about the student debt cancellation, and a big portion still didn't know whether it applied to them or not. So there needs to be a lot done from here to Election Day to make sure that young voters know exactly what was delivered for them. 
Victor, Nancy Pelosi is over 80. Biden's about to turn 80. Schumer is over 70. Just this past weekend, Representative Alyssa Slotkin said this on Meet the Press. Have a listen. I have been very vocal, including with my own leadership in the House, that we need a new generation. We need new blood, period, across the Democratic Party, in the House, the Senate, and the White House. New blood is a good thing. But if the sitting president of the United States decides to run, we're going to support him. Is that a liability for Democrats to have such an aging leadership? And, you know, what do you think of the pros what do you think the prospects are for a new generation of leadership in the Democratic Party, Victor? I think you're already seeing that happening right now. Um, down in Florida, there's uh, someone named Maxwell Frost, who might be the first elected member of Congress who is part of Generation Z. And, you know, Alyssa Slotkin's right. We do have a generational problem in the Democratic Party. We have a lot of old people. But the difference, I think, between right now and I think when Joe Biden ran for president in 2020 and even just a couple of months ago is that I think Democrats are really understanding that maybe the traditional messenger doesn't work anymore, that to have President Biden speak to young people might not work. So what they're doing instead now, and I think it's fascinating, is you're seeing a lot of young people and young activists and influencers take over. So the White House digital team and communications team are interacting directly with influencers right now to make sure that that message gets to young people before the election. And I think that they realize that, you know, the traditional medium of, uh, you know, maybe Nancy Pelosi or Chuck Schumer or President Biden communicating with young people might not work. So instead, they have to think of these innovative ways and creative ways to reach and mobilize young voters. But I think in terms of leadership within the Democratic Party, we're already seeing a lot of young people run for office and hopefully get elected yeah. uh, come November. And, Victor, we have had Maxwell Frost of Florida on this show, uh, an exciting young candidate. I'm going to fact-check you. Apparently, he's not going to be the first Gen Z member of Congress because Madison Cawthorn, outgoing Republican, is Gen Z, although I'm not sure he was great for young people, uh, to be honest. Christina, a poll from NextGen found uh, that after the Supreme Court's Dobbs decision, 44 percent of voters, 18 to 35, were very motivated to vote. How much has Dobbs and the abortion issue being a game-changer in terms of engaging, enthusing young voters? I don't think it can be overstated, the critical importance of Roe being overturned and what a motivating factor it's been for millions and millions of young people to register to vote. We've seen a surge of voter registration in states like Pennsylvania, Texas, mostly from young women and women that are registering as Democrats. And so there are a lot of Republicans running away from the, the abortion issue, not wanting to state clearly where they stand on it. Two in three of the young people that we polled said they felt like abortion was on the ballot this election and motivating them to vote. And of course, 82 percent of young women, young eligible voters, said they were opposed to overturning Roe. So it has remade the possibility of what would be a midterm and a rough midterm for Democrats, um, and especially for so many young women that never had to live in a reality where Roe, the right to decide what happens with your own body, your own future, your own family, has been stripped from them. And Victor, we've got less than 30 seconds left. Last word to you. What would you say to a young voter who says, I'm not planning to vote in the midterms? You know, I understand that sentiment. I hear a lot of my peers say the same thing, but the reality is that all of our voices matter. Every person in this country is supposed to have one vote. We have many problems with our democracy, but at the end of the day, if you turn out and vote, you have a real influence. And I think for too many young people, especially, I understand that sentiment that your voice doesn't matter. But at the end of the day, it's our decision, voice, and our vote that's going to end up uh, deciding who's going to be elected this come November, whether it's going to be a Republican or Democrat, and whether it's going to help our lives or not.